Who we got here? Who's hanging out, man? Hit me up in the chat. How am I supposed to know that it's party time if you guys aren't talking to me? I played a, u- a little ukulele in school. <laughs> We used to take it on like band field trips. We would always bring ukuleles because of course they wouldn't let us play our instruments on the bus. Weird how that works. I think that this will be a fun one just because I normally don't play whiskey for breakfast out of the out of the C position. I normally play it out of the D shapes. So I'm used to playing it like this, not like this. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I can figure it out. This is a uh, D35. Maybe you can see through the sound hole, but it's got a three panel back. It's from 1969, I believe. This needs to be sorted out here. It's starting to lift up. You could probably get a post-it in there or something. A little piece of paper starting to go in. Probably need to get that re-glued. Let's go listen to this break and we can uh, we can start transcribing. Also, I wanted to say if Homespun does have a tab for this, go out, get the Homespun video. I cannot replace the magic of a Homespun VHS. <laughs> but seriously, get get the DVD. Get, I'm sure it comes with a tab booklet. I'm sure it's something that's more reliable than what I'm about to do because I'm just about to transcribe it live and I might make mistakes and all the rest. Or whiskey before breakfast in the key of E flat. Do it, Norman. Let's not butt up more than we could chew. That was that was two A's, two B's. Let's start there. Sounds like a uh, hammer on and then a little strum. Lots of little strums in this arrangement. Maybe we'll put them all in parentheses just to be clear that these are less emphasized notes. It helps if you write on the right string, I always find. I'll tell you what, what I'm hearing in this melody too. So C shapes, obviously. This hammer on maneuver, super common. So as soon as I heard that, of course, I can see it too because there's a video, which is nice, but I, I know what's going on there. We got these little strums in between. Real common to kind of keep some of that boom check feeling alive for him to put in those little strums. We hear that in lots of different arrangements too. So far, nothing too incredible. I think we're going to start hearing more major pentatonic stuff. So it sounds like he's going past like the fourth degree of the scale and stuff. V flat. Let's listen again. Da, 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 ba, da, ba. Now we got little strums over the F chord. I will prove to you what I wrote as well. So, so far we have this. I think I can lock that in. I think that's what I heard. I said this in the last transcription video, but it's worth saying again. A lot of times I just overcommit to guesses. You know, there's a lot of things that I expect to see and things that I expect to come out. It helps my ear and it helps me be a better transcriptionist if I just constantly check to see if I can feel what's happening. I know there's been there's been some comments out there saying that it's black magic or something, but it's certainly not. It is <laughs> certainly not magic. Okay, so he actually plays the melody chunk here. Boo-da-da-da-da. Some of these might be a little double stops and stuff. That's not concerning me right now. We can fix that later as we go. And of course, as soon as I say that we can fix that later, I'm going to go back and fix it because I can't stand looking at it now that I heard it. Da, 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 da. So this is a really common um, tack phrase. I'm going to try to feel this one out. So it sounds like I heard the root note on the downbeat right here. Maybe it was this. Let's check it on my instrument. 
Yeah, I believe that. I hope you're all playing along on your guitars at home, seeing how wrong I'm getting it or how right I'm getting it, you know, either or. But let me know if you find anything. You know, I appreciate the, uh, the comments. And I want to know if you see that I got something totally wrong. Let's fix that key signature, put the capo marking, all the labels. The reason why I'm more or less finishing up this part is because I think we're going to hear more of this. Copy and paste action is going to happen. So it helps if this section is kind of finished up. Make the copy and paste process easier. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So we get this strum again. And it sounds like he's going back to the top. But I don't think he played all of this identically because I remember hearing some drones and stuff. <laughs> So that was definitely different. It sounded like he was alternating between the root and the third, and then the third and the fifth. I, I don't know what you mean, Joey, but I love you. The unison is the most important interval. Oh, okay. Yeah, of course. You're talking about like the drone move that he's about to pull. <laughs> All intervals are equal in my eyes. Oh, man. Sounds like he actually hits the open string right there. And this sounds like it is the open D string. So a quick scoop up to that unison. All right, I think that's right. Wow, did you hear that? We couldn't see his right hand in the footage, but it sounds like a drone. Yeah, you don't get to see it, but it sounds like he goes maybe something like this. And I think he goes back to this line he played earlier. And there we go. <laughs> Let's make sure that's actually true. That was a lot of copy and paste. Yeah, I think that's it. Ooh, another. <laughs> The, the sacred unison <laughs> B part. So I heard this like crazy accidental in there in this B part and it sounded like, oh God, I don't even know what it sounded like. It was almost like he implied like a major two chord or a major six chord or something. I heard like a, just like a, a pang of like, oh, what is that note? <laughs> yeah, right there, right there. So what is that? If that's a, a C sharp, so that's like a, I don't know, like a, a flat nine. So he would be implying like the major six chord, yeah. So, right, that note right there. He, he plays. And I heard that note is like an A major chord. It doesn't make sense functionally or anything. That's just what my brain tried to classify that as. <laughs> What a funky little line. Da, do, da, da, do, da, do. We got to do the old slow down routine. You hit the settings wheel, you go to playback speed. You select something a little more reasonable. Let's go down to half speed. Okay, that's where we were. Uh. I did an oopsie doopsie. I should have slowed it down earlier and now we're fixing my mistakes. That's no good. Dom, I think it's just me and you and the blue chip gang. I don't know where everyone else is. No, no other blue chip gangs here. Joey, do you not play a blue chip? The problem is picks are easy to lose. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. I think that the first time I got an expensive pick, which would have been about like a $15, I think they're $15, the John Pierce uh, Fast Turtles, their casing pick, that made me not lose picks anymore. Suddenly I was very concerned about where the guitar pick was at all times, and I treated it a little more carefully. And like I said, I've only ever owned, truly owned two blue trips in my life, and one of them I snapped, and this is my second one. So yeah, <laughs> I've managed not to lose them, which is, is pretty lucky. You know, fingers crossed and all that. Casein, casein is close to tortoise and it is a really cool material. The thing that I don't like about casein picks is like if you keep them in your like hot pocket or something, they tend to warp a little bit. Sometimes tortoise shell picks do that too, actually. But sometimes they bend or they get a divot or they start pointing a certain direction or something that requires like maintenance or something. And I don't know if you if you're not into it, that, that can be a lot of work. So <laughs> be wary of that. Yeah, keep it in the little pocket of your jeans so you can get a little pick holder. I guess I don't have mine. I have one on my keys. Honestly, I, I just keep mine in 
played my guitar all the time. My guitar hangs right here when it's in the case. It's got the pick in it with it. So we're going to do a little bit of the copy and paste magic. It seems like all of this is the same on his second round through the B part, and then he changes here. Never put the expensive picks in your pocket. Are you talking about when you're playing other people's expensive picks? Because I agree with that. People try to walk off with my picks. Timber tone picks, are those like wooden picks? I've tried a couple of those, but they always seem kind of brittle. Um, I don't know if that's what you're talking about or if that's a different company. I, I have no idea. But that's it. Uh, let's just grab this drum. I feel I feel good about this. I think I want to go through and turn some of these drums into parentheses drums because they're so quiet when he actually does them. I want to make sure that's clear in the in the written transcription. Nice. I know you guys can't see this very well. It's it's kind of just for me to see it. I'm gonna see if I can play through the whole thing. bad for for a first run through i think we might we might have reached the end you all have you all have a great evening i'm gonna sneak off do some video editing and teach a bunch of lessons i'll see you all later